Hey everybody, Lori Bracoloni here. I um, want to go over a couple things here. Somebody posted this in one of the groups and I'm not doing it anymore online because what happens is I get kicked out of groups or I get banned for a couple days. And I can't be doing that. So I've decided to go ahead and do it and copy what people say so that you can learn um, about how you can take care of your horse naturally. HappyNaturalHorse.com. This is what I do. I teach people how to do it. This is called being sound. Naturally. Now, if you want to go and spend a lot of money, then this video is not for you. But this is why horses get sick. So she says she needs some advice. Have a seven-year-old horse. Seven years old. Number one, if you're feeding a horse correctly, you should not have any problems with your seven-year-old. Okay, so I have a seven-year-old mare that hasn't had any injuries that I know of, but I did have the vet look her over a couple months ago, and they found nothing. When I asked her to trot, she pins her ears and bites at her right side. She also does this when I'm tacking her up. But the vet said it's normal for them to be girthy and sensitive. And that's bullshit. Okay? There's something going on with the horse. The horse is trying to tell her something. And she is aware of it. But she doesn't know what it is. She doesn't do this when we're on a trail. Or the last show we went to. Vet didn't think she had ulcers. But I'm concerned that something is hurting her. She does not do this while lunging. Hmm. So... My mare lost a bunch of weight this winter. Oh, okay. So this is this is what she said. She, she was just thinking. But this is one, and then this is another one. And, you know, if your horse is showing pain there, I would check the ulcer point um, on the horse, which is right where the belly button is. You just come over, put your hand on the belly button, and where your... Let's say you put your pinky on the belly button and where your thumb is, you just press in, the horse kicks at you, then you have an ulcer. You got a digestive issue. And you want to be able to correct that. Now she doesn't say what she feeds um, at all. But um, also anytime you have if she's girthy, you're gonna have that's the calcium point. And usually it's a calcium phosphorus deficiency in there. So, um, a horse just doesn't pin its ears unless it's in pain and they'll tolerate as much as you hear me, they'll tolerate pain, but, um, they will not, you know, she'll block the pain, but eventually what's going to happen is if she keeps feeding it the way she's feeding it, um, it's going to just go downhill from there. So what I would do is I would definitely do the pain points. How to identify and release your horse's pain points. And then I would put her on the Big Sky Minerals and rebalance the uh, calcium phosphorus ratio and check for ulcers. That's what I would do for this one. And so this is a second person that posted later on down. My thoroughbred has lost a bunch of weight for the winter. Four flakes of alfalfa for dinner and two for breakfast. She gets senior and special blend beet pulp and trifecta. The trifecta has bee pulp in it, so she's like overloading it. And it has hay and a slow feeder 24-7. I just treated for ulcers and the vet checked her teeth on Tuesday. I'm really not sure where to go at this point of her weight loss. Unfortunately, she's stalled. We don't have turnout in the winter besides the arena. She stalls shares with her uh, pain. Anyway, any advice could be the issue. I literally feeding her more and more. She's feeding this horse more than she's feeding the paint. Number one, alfalfa is not the best thing for a horse, but I understand in the West that they do it. And if she's feeding the beet pulp, the alfalfa is replacing what the beet pulp takes out of the horse. And I know a lot of people poo-poo and say beet pulp's the greatest thing on earth, but it is not. And you have to read my um, article on it, which I will place below this video if you want to read it. So beet pulp is acidic to the gut, doesn't have any benefit at all. It leaches calcium and phosphorus out of the horse 
but the re alpha alpha replaces it. But and then she feeds. I mean, she's absolutely feeding this horse way too much, and so he's probably most likely got an ulcer. So I also would check the um, pain point on the ulcer on this horse. I would just feed it the Timothy Stanley hay pellets. Um, I would give it the Big Sky Minerals and probably some Bennonite clay for 30 days. So, again, why don't you want to feed um, alfalfa? Well, here's the beet pulp. Um, they're all, I mean, rice, rice bran is highly pesticided. Bran irritates the stomach, and the only reason why they give it to horses is so they can clean out their stomachs. So think about that. And beet pulp is uh, laden with pesticides. It's a GM. Oh, modified crops, so it's sprayed with uh, Roundup. And of course, you know, Roundup doesn't get in there, you know? No, you spray it on, it doesn't get in there. Yeah. It's lacking in nutrients, vitamin A and psyllium. And when used as an ingredient, the plier can properly supplement for critical nutrients. It's very high in oscillates, so it binds the calcium. Okay. This is from my book, Natural Equine Remedies. Okay. And then this is from a lady. Her name is Feed Your Horse Like a Horse. She did take this down, but she did say it, and she can't deny it. You're absolutely right. Beet pulp is not a complete feed. and must be balanced with the proper vitamin and mineral supplements. It's very high in oxalate, as your link showed, which binds calcium, so it appears to be high in calcium. It actually isn't a good source of calcium, not well absorbed. And she got hit because she's well known, and she had to take that down. There's an, oh, I certainly agree that beet pulp all by its wisdom doesn't come close to providing any adequate balanced mineral. This is from a vet. Okay, great hat, grass hay is the only one that really fills the bill of being one-stop shopping. Even that is not 100% most of the time. And then this is from a lady that, <laughs> you know, 17-year-old Grand Prix, Dressage Mare, uh, has not been breathing well. I put her on something. Uh, she did better, and I made it through the summer fine. This summer, I started her on bee pulp shreds, and she did not need the IAC. Her coat blossomed to a dark bay, which is the southern sun, but her normal rear end movements and her way of going began to change in the summer progress. She now starts out sluggish and tight, tiny steps, and her rounded top line has changed noticeably appearing a week or back because the bee pulp always affects the hind end weekend weakness. She is a hand variant or bed with your article caught my eye. One of the very good friends is having similar issues with hers. This mare has been trained, blah, blah, blah. If this is a calcium problem, would the feeding some alfalfa take care of this problem? She loves her beef pulp, but it's harming her. I will take it away. Yeah. <laughs> and you can feed. Um, you can feed the alfalfa to replace it, but why you don't need it um even though there's wheat milling in the um big sky minerals there's not very much it just needs it to bust it up and but wheat milling is cheap and it is um usually in the first ingredient in most um feed so especially hay pellets you want to get the stanley hay pellets because those are the true one has a strong binding affinity to important minerals such as calcium and iron. When a mineral binds, specific app becomes insoluble and whatever. But there's only 20 pounds of wheat mendlings, and it's non-GMO because the Amish don't do GMO. A lot of people argue with me, but I already called them, and they said, no, we don't use Roundup. You know, they just it just busts it up. And I think they took it out because the last time I did uh, got my bags, they were really heavy, and they weren't broken up. So they might have to, like, really cut back on it. You know, you don't want to feed your horse oil at all, but um, I don't think this link works either. Um, I want to get down here to alfalfa. If you look at the numbers, it's very clear that alfalfa, 27% protein. Um, the mare's milk is only 14, and the calcium phosphorus ratio is 6 to 1. It's really bad. It's supposed to be 1 to 1. The ideal ratio for the horse the calcium is 1, 5, 1. 1.5 to 1. So we're taking a double protein, quadruple calcium that the horse's body is meant to handle, but he can't. <laughs> so it suppresses the magnesium in there. And you guys, you know, it's like, read your labels. <laughs> so uh, too much protein, 
um, throws the intestinal tract and digestive process out of bar problems. I mean, out of balance, poor digestion, and altered pH. And yeah, poor digestion. You're gonna have a horse that's gonna lose weight. You know, come on, you guys, come on. When he talks about ammonia in here, um, way too much protein. If you have, if you smell ammonia in your barn, you have too much protein. Okay, too much protein in that horse's diet, and you're gonna tax the kidneys. Now let me tell you something. We've had so many people that I mean, I've had like a horrible, horrible winter with mud and everything. And lately, in the last week, we have not been able to clean out my barn. And it is full of manure <laughs> and some hay. And I'll tell you, you can't smell any ammonia in there. You can't smell any pee in there because it's all hay pellets. That's all I feed my horses is hay and Stanley hay pellets and the big sky minerals. So, you know, Get on the bang wagon here, people, and get the book, Natural Equine Remedies, for now. I'm going to be making another one, but I'm going to just, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to do it um, just with the ailments, what not to feed, and why horses need minerals. Okay? That's all I'm going to do, and it's going to be, like, more easier for you guys to understand and where to get it and results from it. So, um, that's my mare before this is, a, I had her for 12 years and she was on commercial diet. And unfortunately, after I discovered everything to keep her healthy, she still came down with COP, but, um, I love my mare and I miss her dearly. And, um, this lady here. He's great. I can't thank you enough. What a difference. I took $500 worth of feed out of her barn tack room. I mean, she had so much crap in there. She was trying everything to help her, her horse. And we just went with the Stanley to meet the help, hay pellets. And the horse is running bucking kicking. And he, she never heard him snicker. And he's nickering now. She thought he had a third surgery. <laughs> oh. He's back to his old self, caught him playing with Comet, Boo Fred, with our orange cones, playing tug of war. He hasn't done that in years. He was too old to want to come play around. This is just going on the Big Sky Minerals, you guys. So, um, these are, this is the kidney point. You push in, you push the sideways, and that's the liver point. You push in there, your horse's tax. But it shows you the altar point, but I'm not going to go all the way down. So I just wanted to show you that this is how you feed your horse, people. Get educated. HappyNaturalHorse.com. Leave a comment. Share this video. Subscribe to my channel. Bye.